Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful summer. Thank you for uh, the opportunities to be with family and friends. Enjoy this beautiful weather. Please watch over, please continue to watch over our Sims administration and Sims public works departments, as well as our first responders with fire and sheriff, as well as the men and women of the armed services protecting us around the world. God bless Sims Township. Amen. 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 Thanks. Uh, I move approval of the agenda. Second. Oh, excuse me. Roll call. Roll call, please. Mr. Beck. Here. Ms. Lease. Here. Mr. Bryan. Second. And now approval of the Here. agenda. <clears throat> Second. Okay. Um, roll call. Ms. Lease. Here. I mean, Mr. I. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Bryan. Uh -oh. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. I uh, move approval of meeting minutes, regular meeting minutes, July 6, 2023. Second. Roll call. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. And fiscal officer's report. Uh, our checking account balance as of the first of the month is stands at $7,737,144.50. The HRA account balance is at $19,428.46. Meter investment account, uh, this is at the June report, we didn't have the figures for the um, July yet, was $8,309,100.82. Revenue to date, $5,928,161.91. Revenue budgeted, $11,951,159.86. Appropriations for 2023, $16,101,617.29. $1 Expenditures to date, $6,020,425.04. Payments made in July, $948,653.80. Some of our major fund balances are general fund, $2,757,678.41. The park levy is at $390,348.97. Rossi Park levy, $466,000. $462.97. Police levy, $1,054,150.97. The fire levies at $633,520.38. Road levy, $560,159.55. Safety <clears throat> services levy, $3,576,218. ARP fund, $835,492.86. And the TIF uh, tax increment financing fund, $2,826,151.46. Total of all funds is $15,107,429.33. Um, we had, I had reported uh, last month that um, uh, we started exploring different possibilities uh, once we reached the point where we were going to move two million dollars out of the checking account into the meter account and when I uh, called my rep at Fifth Third Bank and told him I wanted to move that money in a manner that would cost us nothing he asked me why we were moving it and I said because you're not making me any money so he asked me to hold off and he came back with a proposal for uh, the checking account, which was a very, uh, very, very nice improvement over what we're earning in that account now. But anyhow, I, we had a study done on the meter account to see 
because we're now earning 5% on our money in the regular checking account. And uh, that's, of course, more than what we've earned in the meter fund over the past year. But there are various reasons for that, which you'll understand later tonight. Um, uh, so the, the aim was to evaluate the investments we have in the meter fund to see if it made any sense at all to pay the penalties to cash those out to invest it at five percent in our current checking account and uh, the evaluation certainly showed that it would we would lose too much money uh, in early cash out of those investments so it didn't make economic sense to do that um, at the same time uh, we were given input and these were for representatives from fifth third bank kim's here tonight she's one of them um, uh, Cynthia is not here at the current time. And also seated here is Mark Tellis. He, he does the uh, commercial end of the banking with us. Um, the, you know, from the information I gleaned from the report they gave us at a meeting that Kim Lapensi and I had with them last week is um, they're not at all critical of the way Meter has handled the account. They've done a good job with it. Uh, and, you know, so I, I can't complain about that either. Um, we, we explored, one of the things that we explored also is if we're going to move two million out of the checking account with Fifth Third into the meter account, would it make sense to open an investment account with Fifth Third with that two million? And Kim explained to us uh, at that meeting that we would be duplicating management costs by doing that. So it would be prohibitive to have a second investment fund uh, in, at $2 million. You know, it, it doesn't make economic sense. So um, my, what I came away from that meeting with is, um, and, and I asked Kim and Mark to come tonight and kind of explain briefly what they went over with us it helped me understand better where we are uh, with what we're earning in the current investments in that meter account um, makes more sense to me now um, but i i found the short time i've been fiscal officer that um, you know there at least for me there's a personal aspect and people i deal with with things such as this um, and I, I have to be complimentary to Fifth Third Bank because they've been very responsive anytime we have any question uh, on, on our accounts. Uh, they're right on top of it for us. They're back to us usually the same day. And so, you know, they've been absolutely a pleasure to work with. Um, because of that personal aspect, uh, I'm of the opinion that uh, we can make easier moves and easier decisions if they also manage what is now being managed by uh, meter um, I, I don't have any complaints against meter but as as and we and it would be easier to still say moving funds from the investment side to the commercial side uh, as that becomes necessary in the future and also as attentive as they've been to our needs with with our uh, regular accounts there, I have the feeling that um, we probably would get that same type of treatment uh, with them handling uh, our investments. Um, can you think of anything I missed from that meeting? No? Yeah, okay. Anyhow, um, Kim Cottrell is here tonight to give us some explanation of what we went over in our meeting so everybody understands a little better and you can make a better decision because uh, you guys would have to vote on that of course not me it's not my decision to make but I'm in okay. favor of having them manage our investment account that's what I'm saying okay. yeah look forward to discussing it okay. mm -hmm. I look forward to discussing it yeah anyhow you got to approve my report. I first. do. <laughs> this is what, I didn't want to cut you off. No, okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. 
I move approval of the fiscal officer's report as, as read. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Thank you, Joe. Now, we're going to move into presentations, and Kim and Mark, thank you for being here. We also have State Representative Rachel Baker here this evening. Thank you for coming. Um, does anybody have a particular time crunch? I just wanted to be fair. I don't know if anybody needs to get somewhere. So um, who's going to talk longer? We could put yeah. the shorter one first. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel. We probably won't take that long. I don't know what you need to talk about. Well, we haven't asked you a question yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that okay? Okay. All right. Mark and Kim, take it away, please. Thank you. So I am, I'm not Kim. I'm Mark Tellis. I am, um, I'm the commercial relationship manager for Sims Township. Um, we probably moved the banking over to Fifth Third two years ago, I guess it's been. Mm -hmm. It's been an excellent relationship working with Joe and Kim. Um, we, we probably meet three to four times a year. Um, hopefully we're bringing ideas to Sims and the township and trying to help them uh, either become more efficient or to try to save them some money. Um, but that's my job at the bank is to bring ideas, bring different um, uh, efficiencies to Sims Township and that's what started this with the investments um, we Kim and I had a meeting with Joe and the other Kim to discuss how it would be a little bit more efficient uh, if we did manage the um, investment portfolio um, and that's why Kim's here so I'm gonna let Kim do all the talking Kim <laughs> Cottrell she's an investment consultant in our investment advisors group so great floor is yours thank you thank you mm -hmm. thank you uh, well, thank you for having us. So I thought I'd take a little bit of time. Um, we watched the video from the last session, and so we understand what happened in the last session of um, voting to uh, liquidate the portfolio and move to Fifth Third, and we want to make sure that you understand who we are, who you know who we are. So we, as an asset management firm, have $57 billion in assets under management. We are one of the largest investment advisors in the Midwest. Um, at, as part of the investment division, we are in uh, the Wealth and Asset Management Division in Institutional Services, which is the division that we're in. So underneath Wealth and Asset Management, you've got the private bank that manages money for individuals. In Institutional Services, we manage money for for-profit and not-for-profit entities. Why is that important to you? Well, because all of our clients are like you. They're either for-profit or not-for-profit. They're municipalities. They're not-for-profit organizations. So meeting with board of trustees, meeting with boards, this is what we do on a daily basis. So have comfort in knowing that all of our <clears throat> clients um, are like you. Um, what we talked about um, when we met uh, was the management of the portfolio. And um, so I would say that basically there are two ways to manage a portfolio. One is a buy and hold, and one is active management. And neither one is right or wrong. It just depends on the organization and what the preference is for the board, for the board of trustees. And um, the the, I think what came to question in the portfolio that you have today was the yield to maturity. Seemed lower than what you might be able to get. I think that's what sparked the conversation to Mark was you might be able to get more of a yield to maturity in a deposit account than what you were getting in the investment account. So we did review that, inv that investment portfolio. And our analysis of that that was referenced earlier was that the yield to maturity is low in that, in that portfolio now, but that's only because of how those investments investments and, that, and when those investments um, were purchased in the market cycle. So think back two years ago when yields were at zero before we started with the with a high increase in, in, in rates. Um, there were securities that were purchased to get any kind of yield. We had to go further out and meter had to go further out on the yield curve. And this is what we would have done as well. Further out on the yield curve to get any yield to maximize the yield in portfolio and of course preserve principal. So that's what any investment manager would have done at that time period, which is why that yield to maturity is, is lower right now than you might be able to get in a shorter term portfolio is because we were purchasing, they were purchasing securities on the longer end to get more yield. 
And so the, the duration of that portfolio is a little bit longer now because of what had to been purchased two-ish years ago to maximize that yield. Fast forward two years, rates have dramatically increased. And the way we would manage a portfolio now is we would buy on the short end of that curve. The yield curve's inverted, but we, we wouldn't want to uh, realize any of the losses that are in the portfolio now. So we wouldn't want to sell any of those securities in order to transfer a portfolio to us. We're not going to sell any of those securities to realize any of those losses. We're going to let them mature on, the, uh, on their own. You'll get your principal back. We will reinvest on the shorter end of the curve and max, continue to maximize that yield for you, which right now is at about the five and a quarter with the rate increase last, last week with about the five and a quarter, five and a half um, rate mark. So there's, there's work to be done in the portfolio and the active management of it. But a lot of that portfolio right now is what we would consider buy and hold. Where you're purchasing, you're purchasing securities to preserve your principal and maximize the yield. Makes sense. Yeah. Any questions? And so, um, remind me, what is the pr projected end date for that to make that flip, that switch from to the current investments to the short term? They mature at different yeah. stages. Okay. Some are one, two, three. What's the maximum? Out. Three years out? Yes, the maximum. Yeah. yeah so some are a year from now, some are three years from now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Phil, that report that I handed you, yeah. it yeah. has a whole list of all the maturity dates on there. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they so, go okay. way out, right? They go okay. out beyond three years. Yeah, I think yeah, there's so some out there that are five years. Five, yeah. yeah. Okay. As an investment advisor, as a discretionary manager, the very first thing we, that we would do is to know your investment policy. Well, your investment policy, policy is the Ohio Revised Code. So we would continue to follow that for you and manage that portfolio to that code. Okay, I think what we were okay. talking about so, is if we took that $2 million and maybe they can buy shorter-term bonds mm -hmm. and maximize our mm -hmm. rate of return. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes, for that two million, but then you know the the economics of that wouldn't make sense because okay. the fee schedule that would be applied to just that two million if we just had the two million. No, I mean if we took everything, everything. Oh, like, everything. Yes, yeah, you're correct. Gave you an extra two million, you might purchase shorter term bonds for us versus the longer term. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. There's a there's a buyout, right? No, we would be, this resolution that I have that. For, on the agenda tonight would be just transferring our entire portfolio over to Fifth Third and let them So they manage it? it? Yeah, they would manage Okay, instead of meter. Right. Now, what's meter doing now? Is things mature or how are they reinvesting or have we not had any maturity with them? Uh, yeah, they did reinvest some of the things. You can see on that report that I gave but, but you. But it's still long term, right? Some are short, some are long. They did a variety, yeah, depending okay. on what, at the time, what the rate was. I assume you guys have looked at this. Yes. The portfolio, yes. What they're yeah. doing, and you would have done the same thing? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, generally I speaking, I yes. Earlier. Generally speaking, yes. Okay. Right. Yes. It, 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 it's, it's a product of the rate environment of trying to maximize yield over a very challenging rate environment of next to zero rates rising very quick, quickly to where we are today. Okay. Do we have any liability to meter if we transfer the portfolio? The only thing Kim said that we will have to do is check to see what the term is. Like if we have to give them a 30 day notice and if oh, there's any penalties okay. with that. That doesn't sound like a, yeah. a penalty. There's usually not a dollar penalty for a movement of portfolios from one advisor to the next. Okay. Yeah. So the other consolidation that that would, hap that would happen is, so Meter is contracting with U.S. Bank to serve as the custodian, and we would consolidate those together at Fifth Third. So at Fifth Third, we, serve, we would serve as the discretionary investment manager, so similar to what Meter is doing for you today, and then also the custo the, um, as custodian, which is what U.S. Bank is doing for you today. We consolidate both of those. So again, maybe achieving economies of scale to have everything be in one place, mm -hmm. and we would be serving as both. And the transfer for that in the market, we call that in-kind. So that would be an in-kind transfer. We're just moving securities <clears throat> from one firm to enough to the next so that we're not actively selling anything. Okay. 
Good. Did I miss anything? No, we're good. Okay. I know we've been talking about this for a few months, so I appreciate the summary. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Have a good night. Go? You're yeah, good you're, good. you're okay. welcome to yeah. stay for the yeah. entire yeah. meeting. Yeah. We've got we have. we've got some <laughs> landscaping we got to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Places, you know, yep. <laughs> Some radios. We've had okay. enough. Yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank nice thank to you. meet you. Time. <laughs> All right. State Representative Baker, please. Hello. Oh, okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. 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 Oh, okay. I thought you'd give me a big So you came all the way over from Anderson. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Good. Wow. Thanks for letting me. <laughs> oh, come you got extras. Us. Yeah. Okay. Any, anyone else need one? Good to go. We have yeah. extras. Okay. okay. I got extras. Um, thanks for letting me come, and I already have have a to do from this meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I am Rachel Baker. I just started as your state rep in January, um, and was really hoping to. Be able to come meet with you have an open door and and find out about issues like the tip that i'll look into tomorrow um yes. to make sure that i'm representing you at the state house and okay and can, can i enlighten the rest of the board here I yeah spoke of course with rachel yeah uh we and have we've talked tip. to jeff forbes about this too yeah. we have a so tip stuck jeff's just coming back in our law yeah. director okay. we have a tiff so. stuck and we asked rachel to help break it loose oh okay. and he's giving okay. us information Yes. Do you have anything yet? The TIF extension? Yes. Yeah. Well, if if we're looking at the same thing I'm looking at, the, the, that law changed a couple of years ago that allowed for a one-time extension of TIFs. But, and this is, Kim and I were just talking about this right before, um, that only, only certain TIFs qualified for that extension and you had to have earned or there had to have been what did I say Kim 1.5 1, 1. 1. 5 million dollars in service payments that would that came in in 2019 mm -hmm. and from what I understand ours did not quite reach that level that that extension was only um, only allowed for large TIFs or urban development tips huh. and you had to have at least 1.5 million in 2019 ours didn't reach that level and that's if we're talking about the same extension section so ours was less than that so what and what what I'm wondering is so we filed it with the state right and I would have thought that it would have if it didn't qualify for the extension, they could have or should Denied have, it. would yeah. have told us that <laughs> right. relatively quickly. Hey, you had to have 1.5 million. You didn't quite get there, so you're not eligible for the extension. But so far, that hasn't that hasn't been the case. It's just sitting there. It's just stuck. They mm -hmm. haven't approved it. They haven't denied it. Huh. Um, and so unless there's some other um, change in the TIF statute related to extensions, I, I think that's the one that would govern our extension request. I just don't understand why. You weren't hearing anything. Well, right, it. I yeah. would have thought that it either would have been denied because it didn't, if it's under this new section of 570951, mm -hmm. it would have been easy to deny it and say, sorry, you didn't meet the threshold or or if it did uh, under uh, qualify for an extension under a different provision it would have been approved by now so we're, we're just uh, we're stuck so to assist representative Baker do we know exactly who we sent the extension into well we would I mean Kim that goes to the Department of Development, Development. Development. Yeah. Right. okay I'll Department. follow up with I'm Department sorry. of Development yeah. and get an answer yeah and okay Dinsmore right? well, we probably need to talk. They wrote it. Right. So I would think I'm that they would be. I'm concerned about why we didn't know this. Right. Because yeah, it was right. Brenda that did it. Right. Brenda Weimer. 
And, and that's why I'm saying. You filed an extension and haven't heard of anything. Yeah, that's problem. what I would say. Okay. If, if, if it was because of this threshold, if that's the case, I understand. Mm -hmm. But I would have thought we would have. So we probably also need to talk to Steve Wilson, too, because yeah. he probably could figure it out. We'll, we'll get him to assist you if you need yeah. it. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, and if there's anything else I can share. Yeah. Or if it, well, that's, if that's yeah. new input. I don't even think that we need to like, well, address I'm, that when I'm, we take I'm, it upstate. I'm a little concerned at why we didn't know this. Well, this was a change that happened in the fall of 2019 that allowed for these one time. And it was 2021 when our existing TIF ran out. And there was we a, didn't collect anything in 2022, right, on the extension? 40,000 We something. didn't collect any this year. 2023. Yeah, but okay. it was for 2022, because you always right. collect in the rear. Okay. Right. I, I mean, I can just tell you it says that it's for, for which service payments in payments in lieu of taxes were paid in excess of $1.5 million during 2019 may be extended under this change. Right. There may have been, that's just the one I'm looking at, yeah. there may have been another provision that allowed for a different mm -hmm. extension. This is just the one that I was looking at that I thought may be the reason it's being held well, up. Yeah, so I don't, I, I don't think okay. we need to address that. I think we should just contact. Yeah. 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 Department yeah. of Development that's and find out where it is. Don't give them a reason to deny it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nothing. Uh, okay, yeah. move on. Yes. I will ask about that uh, and I won't mention why they might want to deny it. Yeah, I'm sure. But yeah, <laughs> our law is getting an official ruling as yeah. to why it's yeah, stuck. It's yeah. Happening. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. Thank you. So I will look into that. Um, Thank you. But this is exactly what I was hoping was to meet you all and make make sure that you know that I'm your rep up there and um, happy to you know follow up on issues. Um, I also wanted to come periodically when legislation and budget impacts you. So since we just passed the state budget for the next two years, I brought kind of a, I tried to make 7,000 pages into four. So this okay. does not cover everything. But things that I thought would touch Tim, uh, Sims Township. One, I broke down the school funding increases that'll happen for Indian Hill, Loveland, and Sycamore. Um, so those give you the increases for each of those districts. Um, the Indian Hill and Sycamore have a huge increase because we've increased the minimum amount the state pays. So it used to um, pay 5% is the very minimum it could pay. And we increased that floor to 10%. So Indian Hill and Sycamore are the two in our area that were getting paid at the lowest amount and are being increased. So the biggest percent increase, Big but not, not necessarily the biggest dollar increase, yeah, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, and then Loveland was kind of a mid mid row. Um, we also, for any students that are eligible for re reduced price lunches, we have in the budget to provide free breakfast and lunch for those kids. So no more reduced lunch copay. Um, we also put $5 million in the budget to provide um, period products in sixth through 12th grade for all schools. So they should be in the bathrooms and just like toilet paper available for students. Um, and then I listed all the Hamilton County earmarks. So um, regardless of if they touch Sims Township or not, just so you see where the money is coming into our county. Um, lots of uh, programs that have been funded um, through, through the state for a while. So definitely looking at new places we could put those things, um, but child focus in the schools, um, University of Cincinnati's um, trauma and emergency care, is getting money, the Freeman Center for Intellectual and, Disabil and Developmental Disabilities is getting money, and then the um, local government fund and the PLF are increased 1.7%, so I'll get a breakdown. They haven't done it by townships and municipalities yet, but when I get that, I'll send to you what that means for Sims Township. Okay. That's good news. Yeah, it's good news. We'll see yeah. how much good news. You guys could probably calculate it. I have too many municipalities to figure it out. So. They're going to send me specifics, and I'll send that on to you to make sure it all matches. And I'm um, sorry, that would go into effect when? About? Uh, fiscal year 24, okay. so now. Okay. Yeah, it should go into effect okay. soon. Okay. 
Um, there were a couple things in the budget that local municipalities were concerned about. I don't know if it's an issue for Sims, but things um, looking at home rule and local government control, things like um, there was a provision that would not allow municipalities to put any kind of bans on any tobacco, anything. Some areas are like banning flavored tobacco and things for kids and the governor has vetoed all that. So you guys do have permission to ban things in your own area. Um, one that I stuck in here just because it's interesting if y'all have um, high schoolers, uh, there is now a merit-based Ohio scholarship. So the top 5% of graduating seniors in every school in Ohio will automatically get a $5,000 a year scholarship to go to any Ohio university. Um, so that what? is, yeah. Um, so sorry if you had seniors that graduated last year. <laughs> Starts this year. Um, so it's trying to keep the best of the best in Ohio. We're seeing a huge um, exodus of those people outside of Ohio. So we're trying to keep them in Ohio schools. So top 5% every high school, $5,000 a year if they stay in Ohio. They would get a scholarship in the state of Ohio. In the state of Ohio. Yep. And for four years. So 20000 Wow. Um, and that's, they don't have to apply and get it. It's that just allows, <laughs> yeah. college, that just Dude, allows colleges so to doing. increase their tuition. Yeah. Well, they better not. <laughs> well, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Um, tax credits have gone for low income affordable housing. We're doing a lot to try to address housing. There's an increase to Medicaid reimbursement for vision, dental, and neonate and newborn services. Um, a hold study on food bank funding. There was a proposal by the governor to increase that, which did not make it. So food banks are staying funded with how they have been in the past. And then some programs for lead removal and cleanup are kind of the big the big budget items. But like I said, there's 7,000 pages, so a lot of other stuff. Right. right. Um, so that gives you an overview of it. Um, and I'll know the um, local government fund exact numbers for you guys soon and can send them. I'll just email them in. Great. Can you um, tell me what committees you're on? Yes, I am on, um, so my background is a nurse researcher, so I am on all the health committees, so public health policy, um, health provider services, behavioral health and addiction, um, and then I'm on technology and innovation and aviation and aerospace. So tech stuff and healthcare. Um, and then I'm sitting on the One Ohio uh, Recovery Foundation board, so that's the board that's managing the money that um, has come to the state of Ohio for the opioid settlements with the pharmaceuticals. So I'm on that and I'm on the Ohio Children's Trust Fund, which looks at statewide funding for um, prevention of child abuse and neglect. So any of those kind of issues directly come to me, but any issues on other areas, I can get you to the right people. Don't, mm -hmm. Aren't we getting money for the opioid settlement? Yeah, we're getting it. Yeah. Yes, yes, we're getting it. Do we know how much? Uh, it's only maybe a couple thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so there's like a, it's so strange, like 55% of it went to statewide. So the One Ohio Board will control 55% of the settlement money. And then another percent came to the counties and then it like kept trickling down. So you can, people can apply to it to get money from each of the levels. Um, Hamilton County will have a regional director, which is, who is uh, Denise Driehaus, and then I'll be there advocating for it as a legislator for Hamilton County. So there's going to be definitely um, proposal, requests for proposals for huge funding opportunities. I mean, it's a lot of money. So any areas around opioid prevention, treatment, anything like that that's going on in Sims, reach out for sure because there's huge grants available. we got to find a way to use this money. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that, Chief? I thought so. Yeah. I see your... You know, it's, it's, it's really a shame that um, the, the opioid crisis affected the, the EMS workers and the hospital workers more, and, and law enforcement more than anybody else. And as that legislation is written, there's the settlements written, and what we can do with those funds is minute on the local level. Mm -hmm. uh, townships and, and municipalities are not suited, especially small townships and small cities are not suited to provide social programs. Mm -hmm. So what we can do with that money, even though it is a, just a small amount of money, we were able to use some of that, those funds to help provide PA, behavioral health services 
for our paramedics. Mm -hmm. You know, they were the ones on the front line that were out there were dealing with these people who were overdosing every day. Mm -hmm. And so that created, you know, a real problem within our services, stress on, on, on our folks to, to constantly be going out and, um, and seeing these continuous yeah. folks that are going on there. So, uh, and the other piece of that, you said you were with the Medicare, Medicaid part, you're on that committee? No, no. I'm not on it, but I, oh. can, I can tell okay. them things if you have something for them. Yeah, well, the, the Medicaid reimbursement to the township for an ambulance call mm -hmm. is about $89. Mm -hmm. um, we can start the ambulance up and do about two blocks for $89. Wow. And so, you know, it's... Yeah, and in the state budget, I mean, there were increases to Medicaid coverage for certain services, but the overall Medicaid budget was cut yeah. even more by like a billion dollars, I think. And if we see we're really still in an opioid issue, um, we just came out of a pandemic and we're in a mental health epidemic, you know, to be cutting our health services by a billion dollars is ridiculous, I think. <laughs> I agree with you. And in, in any way that you can 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 have the rules and committee look at how townships can actually use those funds mm -hmm. because right now the only thing we can read into those funds in that legislation is mm -hmm. to be able to provide behavioral health um, to our first responders and education to our first responders and again when you have 65 first responders and you get two or three thousand dollars it's one of those things it's almost not worth the lift yeah to even use the funds so how do the funds come to a township? Is it Hamilton County's allotment? Is <coughs> most most of the money, um, well, we, we were supposed to get a large amount of money, mm -hmm. and then the counties got involved in it, mm -hmm. and they took the majority of the money mm -hmm. at the county level and then trickled, you know, So it's Hamilton down. County's allotment that then got trickled a little bit to you? We actually get it directly from the state of Ohio. Right. Because mm -hmm. it does not come through Hamilton County. It comes directly from the state. It just shows up on our bank statement Okay. Yeah, I think originally our, our funds were supposed to be about $80,000 a year mm -hmm. and they ended up being just a few thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. But that was because they, then again, the counties uh, lobby. The counties have a big chair. Yeah. A big share. Of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can't even spend it to reimburse ourselves for all the Narcan that we've, no. that we had to purchase? No. It's really, uh, the, the legend or the, or the, the, uh, the lawsuit that, um, was really, I won't say the lawsuit, it would be the settlement. Mm -hmm. The settlement was really written basically that those funds were supposed to be used for the, um, for the victims of the opioid and providing services to those folks. Um, but there was, and, and there's some clause in there for the first responders mm -hmm. and, and that, but what we can use it for is minute. Okay. Minute. And we thought when it was originally, the settlement was supposed to be seventy to eighty thousand dollars for the fire district. It would have been a total of about one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year, which is real money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but yeah, thank you. There's for a lot of like bureaucracy and all this. <laughs> when there's a lot of money, there's a lot of bureaucracy. But there will be there's this huge, yeah. There will be a huge amount managed by the state, which has to go out. So it's figuring out you know, areas that need, you know, areas that are already paid for, you know, Medicaid's paying for treatment, Medicaid's paying for certain things. So what are those things in the opioid world that are not being paid for and how do we create grant systems for those and, and allow townships and municipalities to apply for them is I think what the board will need to work on next. So a good, a good area of that is first responder. Isn't first our responder. area kind of like, like a, stomping ground, not a stomping ground, but like a, like a cross section where people come for with opioid Well, we, we, because of the interstates, Thank you. we get a lot of um, traffic coming from Columbus, coming from Cincinnati. They'll purchase in Cincinnati and what will happen is they can't wait to get home. You know, mm -hmm. these people are addicted. So we're, we're, they're in our gas stations, they're mm -hmm. in our, our parking lots, they're in our grocery stores and the restrooms shooting up and doing their drugs and, and overdosing here. So it's creating, you know, an issue that we have here because our, our numbers in Sims Township have, for overdoses have been going down since the spike of the epidemic. Mm -hmm. They have continuously been going down. And, um, but if you look at 
if we look at the, the volume that happens in, in the township, most of that is not happening in our residential areas. It's mm -hmm. happening in our commercial areas. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's still it's people passing through. Driving through, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You're so I'm to, happy to... to add? I think the chief... Okay, yeah, there's one again. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So as we, like, flesh out Sorry. the details of that Ohio state-level money, I'll forward it on, see if there's anything it can be used for here. Kim? In the biennial budget, which we're talking about, right? Yep. We normally get a grant for parks and improvements and things like that. What are what are we set for in the next biennial budget? Are we going to get anything? We have to apply. Yeah, we have to apply. Yeah, we go through a whole series of videos. Did we, did we miss an opportunity? No, we just we just we just yeah. went through the whole capital grant process. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's Kim and I go down down this year or next year. Kind of might have been it's next the beginning year. of next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for money. Yep. I get on my Damn. hands and knees. Kim gets on. <laughs> so yeah. this was the state <laughs> operating budget, and then the capital budget will be the beginning of next year. Okay. And that's where you're. At, it's yeah. At the P and G building. You go to interview. So we're yeah. not going to state legislature no, begging. We're going. To no, we meeting. we have to go to a subcommittee that's usually down in Cincinnati, like okay. the Chamber yeah. of Commerce heads it up. Okay. Yeah. Ready, Cincinnati, like all that. Right. So Jody and I went to a dog and pony show. We <laughs> basically like two years ago. Yeah. Kim, Kim presented and then I got on my hands and knees. <laughs> please, please, okay. wonder that's, that's, what, that's what I was going to, I wanted to make sure I brought up before you left is that, you know, over the last five years, we've gotten yeah. five million, or I'm sorry, two million, mm -hmm. over two million in, in state yeah, grants. And, yeah. um, and plus odds. I was going to say yeah. safety yeah. services over 1.5 million, mm -hmm. um, more or less split between federal and state funding. Mm -hmm. So um, we've been pretty aggressive about uh, going for things, and, and your predecessor, Representative That's Brickman, yeah. would, you know, he'd give us, sometimes we'd ping on him, and sometimes he'd ping on us, mm -hmm. and we welcome that. So, yeah, that's great. Yes. And that's why I asked what committee you're on, because I wanted to know if you were on finance. <laughs> yeah, not on finance. Because then I'd be bugging you. <laughs> Good. But yeah, so when we apply for, for things, we'll, we'll yeah, definitely Yeah, let me know for sure. Yeah. 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 Great. Good. Well, All thank right. you. Thanks for letting me stop in. Thank, thank you. Thanks for coming. coming. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for nice the helpful you. summary. Yeah. And you're welcome to stay. Have a great night. Lots of fun <laughs> things on the agenda. Nice Take care. Okay. Finish with presentations. No public hearings. I move approval of disbursements warrants number 83187 to 83303 and vouchers 367 to 416, totaling $948,653.80. Second. Roll call. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Reports. Law Director. Thank you. Uh, no report tonight. Okay. Police. Lieutenant. Uh, just real quick, the printers for the uh, e-citation program have been installed in the cars. And they, came, they got done with that last week. And uh, we are just waiting on the paper, which, like everything else uh, in law enforcement supply, is on back order. So once we get that, we will work on training the guys. So we hope to get that uh, within the next couple weeks and roll that out later in the month. Great. That's Great. all. Thank you. Chief? Uh, thank you, Board. Uh, while we're discussing grants, um, we have some good grant news, so I'll give that to you now if you don't mind. Uh, two weeks ago, we got a $98,000 grant from the state of Ohio for to help to hire behavioral health services for our employees, um, as also uh, $12,000 from them to um, pay for a physical fitness specialist to train our folks um, in physical fitness. Uh, so that came from the state of Ohio. Friday, we got a $440,000 grant from the federal government um, to hire a behavioral health specialist, a doctor, um, to provide their services for our employees, along with uh, physical fitness equipment um, for all the fire stations. Um, along with that, for pre-cancer screening and physicals to meet the NFPA 1583 for all of our firefighters and a complete cancer screening. 
uh, a complete body scan for all of our firefighters wow. uh, to create the baseline for that. Um, yesterday, we got a $257,000 grant notification for um, all new uh, fire equipment that will go on the new township's fire engine. Um, so instead of the township having to pay for that, uh, for the new engine. So we got that also um, for two new heart monitors um, for the township's uh, vehicles and $60,000 to uh, train paramedics. Um, we also have, and we're in line with two more, we have our fire prevention um, grant that has been submitted, but has not been approved yet, but has been submitted to continue our, um, our fire prevention program where we do the door-to-door -door with the smoke detector blitz for the residents. Mm -hmm. So that, um, that grant is still out there yet, it hasn't been approved yet. And we're also in with a regional grant with the city of Mason for all new SCBA um, uh, pack, air packs for all of our engines, all of our ladders, so for all of those. So, um, and then we're preparing one because your, your radios, as you'll see tonight, your radios mm -hmm. are, are beginning to come to end of life. So we have another regional grant that we're gonna go into with our collaborative partners because that's probably more like about a $2 million expenditure. So uh, not just for SIMS, two million dollars for for the region. So, okay. um, so we're gonna we're gonna shoot that in there for a federal grant as well. And so uh, we got quite a few grants that are going on. Of course, we as you know, you've already received a BWC grant a couple months ago for a new cot for the ambulance. Mm -hmm. So any opportunities we see out there, we we hit the we hit them hard. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and as the township knows, there's a 90, 90, 10. So 10% is local match and, mm -hmm. and that's so, but we're gonna continue and we do have one other one in there is for a, um, I don't think we're gonna be very successful, but I apply for them all. So, and that is for a, uh, a tanker for the interstate, you know, with electric vehicles and that now, they need copious amounts of water for us to be able to extinguish those. Mm. So um, even though we would not normally need a tanker for operations in the fire district, um, the interstate and electric vehicles would would quote for that. So we we um, we applied for that. I don't know if we'll be successful, but those are all the ones that are in right now. And then we will be applying again in October for next year's rounds. Is there any areas around us that we're providing mutual aid for that might benefit from that tanker that could go into your proposal? Well, what we, did, we did that. We put it in as a regional. Okay. We're the host, but we put it in as a regional because we're the closest fire station to the uh, interstate. Right. So we put it in as, as the host for that. So it, it takes and encompasses all of the communities around us so that our numbers are much, much better for the- right. uh, Your points. For the points for the grants. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, okay, good. And, um, and, and I just noticed I, uh, this has nothing to do with fire, but we might be eligible also for the ODNR grants because of the bike trail. I know Loveland are getting quite a few of those, but I know you're trying to do something at the Cannon, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if somehow you incorporate something in there, uh, a parking area or something, there's a good chance you could get the ODNR funding for that, and those are usually a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. I know mm -hmm. Milford gets it on that side of the trail, Loveland gets it, Hamilton Township gets it. Hmm. So we've got a, a sizable piece of trail that we might right. be able to do something with uh, with yeah. those grants coming up from ODNR. Yeah, that would be great. great. And when so. do you think the deadline for that is, the ODNR? Um, it's in the fiscal year, so I think those should be coming out now. Okay. You know, as far as your ability to apply for them. Okay. For next year's uh, right. funding. Okay. Right. right. Great. Good. All good news. Thank you, Chief. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director of Public Works. Kim, do you have anything? We are hoping that paving will be started by the end of the month. Okay. And then that incorporates the trail as well at Seven Gables. Great. Good. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Any committee? Mm -hmm. None. Uh, any other? Hearing from residents, we cleared out the house. Uh, correspondence, uh, let's see, letter received from Orbach Affordable Housing, reference to MacArthur Park Apartments and see attached list to the meeting minutes for all other correspondence. Are there any comments pertaining to that one item, Kim? Yeah, so we received this Orbach 
You familiar with that? Affordable no. housing familiar letter. Or bond. Thank you. Okay. And uh, basically it said the purpose of this letter is to apprise your office that Orbach Affordable Housing Solutions LLC plans to be the general partner of a residential rental development located in or within a one half mile radius of your political jurisdiction and will submit an application to utilize the multifamily funding programs of the Ohio Housing Finance Agency for the development of this property. The property is the rehabilitation of MacArthur Park Apartments which is an 85 family project, 85 unit family project located in Loveland, which is, I think it's on Park Avenue. Uh, the purpose, the proposed development will be financed with first mortgage from Key Bank, proceeds from the sale of 4% LIHTC to PNC Bank and deferred developer fee. So yes, this is 660 Park, and Ave Park Avenue, Loveland, 85 units. So basically it says that we have the right to submit comments to OHFA regarding the proposed project's impact on the community. Any objection to the project must be submitted in writing and signed by a majority of the voting members of the legislative body. Comments must be received by OHFA within 30 days of the mailing notice. So we got this on July 25th, it looks like. Okay. So, so I don't know if anybody had any comments um, or if I need to make objections to them um, receiving the money or whatever impact it would have on our community, if you guys have an opinion about it. I just want to make sure it doesn't impact our police and fire. Right. Well, yeah. it's going to impact fire when, when we are yeah. well, This is not a new complex. No. This is the complex that is there. What's happening is just another management company is taking it over and getting the tax credits to do that work. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's been in existence, I think, since the 60s, early 60s. Okay. And yeah. so they're not adding on to it. They're actually redeveloping it, making it nicer. Nice. But, but because it's changed hand. Sorry. Is it subsidized? Yes. It's, it's, I was going to say housing. that it's the term affordable subsidized. housing speaks to what section eight is it yeah it's, it's, it's subsidized housing it's already it's already been there yeah. it's been subsidized housing from the 60s oh, okay, it's okay. Been all right housing. and uh, it's tucked back there in the corner behind simpson farm and um, so we do not we, we make calls there and we do any other um, apartment complex we have but it is not i wouldn't say that it is overbearing on the services at all okay it's it, it's not going to change this is them trying to get i believe their for federal tax credits to be able to do the work and, uh, and get credit through metropolitan housing mm. um, to be able to provide their services. So they, they always have to show a, um, a need, and I think that's what they're doing now is they're, is they're showing their need to get approval. Mm -hmm. And during that need, they have to ask any of the local governments, you know, I'm, I'm sure the school board got the same thing. You know, are you, uh, is this causing you a problem? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know, off off the cuff, if you were to compare calls at this location versus the one here up in Fields Hurdle? I'd say it's about even. It's about even. And even, yeah. and it's half the size on a Fields Hurdle. Right. There's like how many units back there? Thirty? Thirty-five? No, I think there's more than that. Yeah. And um, you know, and, and it, it all depends too on. As an example, we have a patient, we have a, an elderly patient that lives at Park Avenue that needs EMS care a lot, so we're there, um, you know, more so than we normally would be anywhere else. So that's an anomaly or, or an outlier. So if you take that outlier, that number out, it'd be about that. You know, we, we deal with um, Chapelwood Apartments, which is now uh, eight, moving eight. from subsidized to non-subsidized. And we have Westover Village, which is subsidized, has always been subsidized. Um, and then the fields are over townhouses, which again is subsidized. And um, they are not, um, out, of, out of all three, um, they're probably pretty even. Okay. Pretty even. Hmm. And, um, and ours is the smallest? Yes. 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 And, and, and all of yours are townhouses. So they tend to be um, entire families versus just, uh, you know, uh, split up in families. 
Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate that right. input. Yes, thank you. Okay. While we're on correspondence, can I ask a question? I received an email on my old email account from someone named Michael Gaynor. And he talks about, I work on transportation policy issues in Ohio for Go Rail. And what they're doing is they want our support in a letter opposing heavier trucks on the road. Did any of you guys get that? No. I got that. Okay. All right. That's all I know is if you got it. I don't know when I get something, who else gets it or who doesn't. Mm -hmm. so. I can forward it to you guys. Okay. Okay. So back to your question, Kim. Uh, do we have comments? I guess we've, I've explained it. we've learned that it's, it's not necessarily a, a trouble spot, but we nonetheless still have concerns about burden on our safety services. Okay. I, mean, I don't know if we just want to make a general statement, but it sounds actually like hopefully it will get better and if they're going to sink put money into it and make improvements that's a good thing mm -hmm. well, okay. we, we thought that was going to happen with fields or little town homes too didn't we well kim um, and i had they a did meeting. put money in and make improvements but yeah. it, we still have issues yeah. right. yes so kim and i had a meeting with the property manager and the regional manager mm -hmm. and it was very productive so hopefully now that there is a property manager for because for the longest time there wasn't a property manager and now we have contacts we'll be able to uh when, be more commutative so mm -hmm. you know what i mean okay. well maybe that's a comment when to, oh, to yeah. see if when, they are uh, going to have a when property they first manager. came to us when up, upgrading the field turtle town homes didn't they advertise that they were going to have an on-site Security. Security. <clears throat> and a manager, and yeah. then the managers and, have come and gone. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So they just can't keep one. No, they no. can't the keep one. The intent is to have one there, though. Okay. <clears throat> right. And then the regional manager, he left, and I think it took a while for us to find out who the new regional manager is so we could figure out who, who to contact. Who to contact. Yeah. But I know a lot of the complaints that we hear from the Fields Earl townhomes is that the residents do not feel that basically the improvements that they make to the building, they're not really fixing all the issues in the building. They're just kind of fixing all the facade, but they're not fixing. So it's the op optics rather than. Yes. Okay. Rather than the function. Okay. Yeah. So they're not fixing the electricity. They're not fixing the plumbing. They're not fixing the things that need to be fixed. They're fixing the. What? Right. What's on the outside? Who should that be reported to? I mean, are the people complaining? And, and what's, what's well, yes, happening? people complain to us all the time, but we, the township, cannot do anything right. about that. So right. we refer them to the building department. Okay. All right. Okay. So you got enough to go on. Okay. Uh, that's it for correspondence. Mm -hmm. Moving into events and meetings. Story time with the library, Friday, August 18th, from 10 to 10.30 a.m. at Mead Historic Preserve. Uh, Labor Day holiday coming up Monday, September 4th, 2023. All government buildings will be closed. And the next regular trustees meeting is currently scheduled for Tuesday, September 5th, 7 p.m. here at the administration building. But uh, I would like to see if we could move that by one week. Uh, from September 5th to the 12th, same time, same location. Are you good with that, Kim? Yeah, I'm fine with that. You're good with that, okay. Yep. And we're good with that, and Joe's going to be out of town yeah. no matter what, 5th and the 12th, and Jeff's going to check. Yeah, he's a maybe. Okay. So um, if I could make a motion to change the, the September trustee meeting, from September 5th to September 12th. Second. Roll call. Mr. Bryan. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Sleas. Aye. All right, thank you. Old business, a move approval resolution G2023-79, resolution appointing Fifth Third Bank as the discretionary investment manager for Sims Township and authorizing the transfer of management of all current investments to Fifth Third Bank. Second discussion um 
Did you talk to the finance committee about this, Joe? That's my question, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Didn't you see the emails going back and forth? I saw them, but... Yeah, I, one I, uh, I contacted but, all but, of them. But I thought that a lot of the correspondence was going back and forth to whether we were going to put another two million in meter. I don't That's recall that court communication being back and forth yeah. about moving to fifth third. Well, <clears throat> in the contact I had with the finance committee, and I contacted all the members, um, I explained to them what the change was in our checking account. What brought everything up was moving the two million, mm -hmm. and for third asking me why we were moving it, and then the offer they came up with in our checking account, which makes up one buku buck lot more money in that account, um, and they they had uh, they didn't they didn't have any objection to either leaving it with meter or moving it from okay. meter. Right. There really were no. Uh, strong arguments for or against either thing. It was what made the most sense for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get any negative feedback from them on uh, on that. I just wanted to know <clears throat> if, if you had talked with the finance committee about it, and the answer is yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to do anything like that without yeah. keeping them in the loop. I yeah. mean, communications is always good. Hmm? Communication is, is always good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, they went years with no communication, mm -hmm. as we all know. Right. You know, so that's not fair. If they're going to volunteer their time to serve on a volunteer committee, they ought to be kept in the loop, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, Joe, I know you've got a lot on your plate, and I know you've invested a lot of time into doing all this research, and I just want to thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate yeah. that. We appreciate it, Joe. Oh, yeah, well, you're welcome. It's, it's Happy to do it. It's worth it. I'm glad we're making more money. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah. Good. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Into new business, I move, appro uh, I move approval of resolution G2023-81. Resolution authorizing the township administrator to enter into a joint maintenance agreement for the Elgin Crosswind Street Sweeper between the Board of Trustees of Sims Township and the Board of Trustees of Sycamore Township. Second. Discussion. We received the new street sweeper mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. So this is just a maintenance agreement solidifying what each of us are responsible for. Basically, we agreed, I think, we agreed to carry the insurance and then Sycamore Township agrees to house it and then everything else we're just going to split 50-50 as far as maintenance is Street concerned. Street miles, how do they compare with us? Are, are we going to do this on an hourly accounting 50-50 or what? I don't know. I don't know how many street miles Sycamore has. Well, I'm just, I'm just curious about util utilization of it. If they have more street miles, they're probably going to have to use it more than we are. And I'm wondering if 50-50 is the right split. Is it being utilized now? I think they're probably in the lettering and all that kind of space, right? We just yeah, we, it. we had it, we did training on it, and then they put, I thought they put the lettering on it mm -hmm. already, and then we used it, and then now it's back at, I think it's back at Sycamore Township. Okay. But is it something like a generator where you keep track of the number of hours on the thing and so on, and who's using it? I would it? think so, but well, I don't know. Can, I'll can I put, just text Can we put Tracy. that in the agreement? Uh, the agreement was already done by Sycamore Township, so. So I guess we want it to be We fair. want it to be equitable, is all right. I'm saying. Fifth, yeah, straight 50-50 might be fair or might not, so. Well, I don't know enough to say. I mean, I could Sycamore's say. bigger than Sims. I think it is. For sure. I think I'm more money. Way more money. Do we want to hold on this? Yeah, until I guess until I can get an answer. I texted both Bill and Tracy to see. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Um, I can move to table this motion. Yeah. Okay. I move to table motion uh, resolution G2023 81 until we get more information. Second. Roll call. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Okay, I move approval resolution G2023-82, resolution authorizing the township administrator to enter into an agreement with River Oak Services LLC for the installation of landscape materials and the medians on Montgomery Road in the amount not to exceed 50,000. Second. Discussion. I hate to ask you to do this, but if you guys could table this resolution, the state approved with their um, budget bill that the bid limit is going to go from 50,000 to 75,000 and it goes into effect October 3rd. So there's a couple more things that we want to add to this bid, which is the rocks and the boulder. We, cause we had taken those out to keep it under 50. Mm. So we would like to add that back in and I'm going to get a new estimate from, from uh, river Oaks. So I was hoping that you guys could table it until October. When, when would this effort be done and would we be holding it up if, if we table? No, we're just going to do it in October. Okay. The budget bill goes in the, want to do it in the this goes the bid limit thing goes into effect on October 3rd. Our meeting happens to be on October 3rd. Okay. So as soon as we get that approved, then the contractor can do it in October. We've already talked to him about that and he says he can do that. Okay. I was almost a yay. I know. I'm sorry. Because I don't want to rain on your I parade. I have to tell you, <laughs> since I've been a trustee, I've been asking to decorate. I mean, like, what, 20 years, 19, 20 I know, years. but we just got the permit yeah. the other day. I've been asking to landscape the medians. And finally, yay. Yeah, we just got the permit the <laughs> other day. Almost there. Hey, so. we persisted. It does. It's patient. <laughs> I've had the, the permit up there for about five weeks, so, and we finally just got it the other day. 15, not 20. All right, I move to table resolution G2023-82. Do I have a second? I'm sorry. I table it. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Roll call. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. But I will bring it back in October, Jody. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. I move approval of resolution G2023-83, resolution authorizing the township administrator to enter into a contract renewal with principal for providing dental, life, vision, and short-term disability insurance coverage for the elected officials and full-time employees of Sims Township. Second. Discussion. So we just got this renewal back mm -hmm. last week, and the only thing that we got an increase on was our dental rates, which was 5.4%. Everything else remained the same. Good. So I just recommend that we stay with them. Yeah. 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 And the amount on the prepaid card thing that that's the same as last this year. is not that yeah. this i know is, that was part of the other insurance but yes yeah that prepaid all, amount stayed the same it's all the same yeah okay, okay. so that's already yeah that we did that last, in august. last month yeah. right but i mean it became effective in august right yes august oh, yeah. 1st which is today and yeah. you guys should have already gotten your health cards because i got started, mine in the mail started. yes yeah okay did you get them today uh, uh yesterday saturday. i think saturday I got mine yesterday. Yes, oh, Sunday. Got mine. We got ours. No, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm the day off. Yeah. Did it? Was it from Medical Mutual? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe I did. Yeah. I think maybe I okay. got mine yesterday okay. also. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Okay. I just opened it today. Uh oh. I better go home and. <laughs> Roll call. Uh, Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. I move approval of resolution G2023-84, resolution authorizing the purchase of radios and various other equipment from Motorola for the fire department in the amount of $35,670.30. Second. Discussion. Is, is, is this what Ott's referring to? Is Intermediate yes. before we get into the million dollar. Right, so this 35,000 is, is, I think it's, seven or eight radios that are becoming, let me see, okay. he has it right. they're becoming um, obsolete because yes, of self software. software. Yes. Okay. So he wants to go ahead and order them. Oh, they've been in service for the last 15 years. <coughs> so he wants to go ahead and order these radios because it's probably going to take about a year to come in. But he budgeted for them this year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we probably most likely won't expend the funds until 2024. 
and maybe we'll get a grant by then. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Roll call. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. I move approval of resolution G2023-85, resolution authorizing the township administrator to enter into an agreement with Stiles and Sons for honeysuckle removal at multiple park locations in the amount of $12,500. Second. Discussion. Can we put up some, some signage? I think people um, are getting alerting. it. Yeah, I but I mean, still we, do I that to say I mean, honeysuckle is you know, will be trimmed when we removed last year's everyone that i saw walking was like thank wow. god <laughs> good yeah. for you guys because right. they i think yeah. it's catchy that everybody knows now right people are getting used to it mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it's happening in other communities too right but still could we put up just some yeah. temporary I mean, signage just saying these honeysuckle, honeysuckle maintenance yeah. In the coming weeks, um, or and something what they like removed that. last year looks really good still this year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was my question: Is Styles and Son certified for honeysuckle removal, or is that a requirement, or necessity, or what? No, there's no need to be certified. They just rent the 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 head of the machine on from a skid steer. So you put that. Um, I forgot the name. That's okay. Name. Go ahead. Anyway, you cut the you put the cutter head on it. And then you add it to a skid steer, and then you just it basically drives and then cuts. It's like a bush hog. Yes, yeah, it, but it's much larger. Okay. And it cuts, you know, but pretty good sized trees down. At the ground level. No, it'll cut the whole tree down. Like if you have a dead tree that's probably five feet tall, it will cut the whole thing down. Okay. What about the root system? It doesn't do the roots. Okay, that's my question. Is that all this remediation going to come back? Of course, well, you definitely have comes, to spray it. Yeah. You definitely have to continue to spray it after that. I mean, and cut it down. An invasive. Spray. Yep. Okay. And or you just cut it like you come back after so many years yeah. and cut it There's, back. Yeah. Okay. Fecon, fecon head. That's what it's called. Okay. Yeah. As long as it's not bad for the environment. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mainly, you would just come back and cut I, it down. Yeah. My my question yeah. is more one for my own edification or my education, I guess is a better word. Um, I was just curious. I have some honeysuckle on how to get rid of it. Yeah, it's back breaking work. I can continuously you to dig out the roots. Well, I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> for your for your information, Joe, uh, under the high power lines, they use herbicides. They use herbicides and mm. try and kill it back to the root. Yeah. And then leave it. Indiscriminately. And leave it. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we know a company that does that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, any other discussion? Roll call. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. And I move approval resolution G2023-86, resolution approving expenditures for the 2024 bicentennial <laughs> event that will be held at Home of the Brave Park. Second. Discussion. So I took the liberty of coming up with a list, a preliminary list. It's not the end all be all. Um, you guys tell me how you want to do it. But so far I've plugged in Rossi Fireworks for 25,000. And then we have one band lined up, the Naked Karate Girls for 5,500. I put a placeholder in there for band two at 15,000 and band three at 50,000. I don't know if I'm way off base. Too much money, not enough money. So I thought I'd start somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, when we were looking on the booking sites, the prices go from if you just want a Cincinnati band, it's around fifty-five hundred to seventy-five hundred. If you want a mainstream band, the less known people start about fifteen to twenty-five, and then the people that were popular in like the nineties or eighties are more like 50 to 75, but then anybody that's popular right now is like 750 to a million. Ooh. So I know that's way yeah. too far, but I didn't know if 50 to 75 was a good you know, place to be if you wanted to get like a headliner that would be the last music you know, of the well, night. Maybe, a, a, I guess I looked at that resolution 
And if I added up just the numbers that you benchmarked in there, there's something around 125 to 135,000. Yep. So maybe we just start there and say, would the board be willing to spend 125 to 135,000? And if we can stay under that, we would do it. So what's everybody think? Can I make a suggestion? Sure. I think this is a good place to start. I'd like to do a work session. Okay. In, in bicentennial, maybe in the fall. I mean, we don't okay. have to do it right now. Well, and then we can get everything organized and planned. And then I think then we'll know more about how much money we need. Okay. okay. The only thing, I have to sign this contract for 5500 for the Karate Girls. Oh, absolutely. So sure. If you, if you want to table this, but then authorize at least so I can go ahead and sign the 5500 yeah. mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, and, oh, and I got to lock the advertising in, so yeah, too. There's, I gotta, there's another concern, and that is it may take a year for us to get somebody. Right. Okay. Time we, is up. I mean, yes. you picked July 20th, yes. and now I see it's at Home of the Brave Park. Those are two two pieces set in stone, I think. Now, now we want to expand that, and if you have a date and a location and so on, then you can contact some of these other bands, find out about availability, what the cost range is, and so on, and bring that to the work session. I think. What do you I think, you know, I, I know that everyone, Luann and Kelly and Kim, are doing a great job working on it. So we'll just see what happens, right? If you come across a really good band that you really won and they're 50000 I mean, we can put it on our next agenda. But okay. I only suggested that we just have a work session so we all, we get organized. Okay, but there's a, this is one event. We're going to end this work session and talk about the other events well, in the yeah. bicentennial yeah, yeah we'll have yeah. to do that Everything. too but i just okay. i need to sign that fifty five hundred dollar contract and then i also need to start the advertising which is yeah. almost nine thousand dollars okay yeah did, so if you could authorize me to do those two things for now i'm good fireworks he told me he's not in any hurry for it but and what was that total again fireworks total it's twenty five thousand okay and talk about and then, what talk about what we're going to get for that yeah, we're going to get the at least a 20 to 25 minute show, and that'll include fireworks, a drone show, and all the music to go that's with it. That's like Blue Ash to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's the much bigger scale than what we've had. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. So that's good. Also, yep. in this $5,500 for the Naked Karate Girls, would you talk about what else we're getting with that? Yeah, so we'll, we, we're going to get their sound engineer. So we'll, they'll do our sound for the whole night. So from whatever time to whatever time, they'll, they'll provide the sound for us. So we'll just have to figure out how we're going to power it. We'll probably have to get a generator. Okay. So. But when you contact other bands and so on, you might want to tell them that this is the plan or this is a possibility right okay because they may have their own sound equipment and so on that they want to use yeah speaker wise and otherwise so as long as we communicate to anybody else we reach out to and let them know kind of what what's in the works now that we're already paying for okay so i need to amend this resolution to not to exceed twenty thousand. well you can table it but just like maybe under um you know how we usually do the thing at the bottom where it says you authorize the township minister yeah, even though i know i don't have it on here yeah but, we're at the bottom <laughs> yeah normally we would have it on the bottom to okay authorize so we just do a new a new yeah so, we'll, so okay so i move to table resolution g2023-86 second um Vote, please. Roll Mr. Call. Beck. Mr. Sorry. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryan. Aye. And I move to approve um, not to exceed amount 20000 to for the township administrator to make reservations pertaining to the band and, I'm sorry, what was the, the other? The, the advertising. advertising. Mm -hmm. The band and the advertising leading up to the bicentennial event at home of the Brave Park. Second. Roll call. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryan. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Thank you. Okay. And All right, I have answers to the other thing for the sweeper. Okay. So Bill says that he thinks Sycamore Township has 50 miles of roadway where we have 43, so we're not that far off. 
Um, he said Sycamore's mechanic is going to be doing most of the service and repairs. And then all we would have to do is split his hourly rate which doesn't include anything else. So it wouldn't be the benefits, it wouldn't be anything, it would just be his hourly rate. And then Bill said they will be storing the sweeper at their facility. Okay. So if that makes you feel better. So what do you want to do? We already tabled the motion, you want to bring it back? Yeah. Can we, we do that, Jeff? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I move approval of Resolution G2023-81, resolution authorizing the Township Administrator to enter into a joint maintenance agreement for the Elgin Crosswind Street Sweeper between the Board of, Town Board of Trustees of Sims Township and the Board of Trustees of Sycamore Township. Second. We've already had discussion. Roll call. Mr. Bryant. Aye. Mr. Beck. Aye. Ms. Lease. Aye. I move, uh, we move into executive session per ORC section 121-22 G1 to consider the compensation and employment of a public official or employee. Second. Uh, roll call. Mr. Beck. Aye. Mr. Ms. Lease. Aye. Mr. Bryant. Aye. All right. Okay. 